Hey everybody, this is Dr. Joe Borio with this week's Health Kick. We had a great weekend. We just got off. For those of you that, that don't know, I run a company. It's called Chiropractic Consulting. And we just got off a great weekend down in Philadelphia helping other chiropractors. We brought in a neurologist, a functional neurologist. His name was Dr. Tom Culleton. And he spoke for four hours and it blows your mind. I, I know as a chiropractor, I'm so excited about what we do. I'm so excited about the anatomy and the physiology and how the whole body works. And I constantly am learning more. And boy, I learned a lot more this weekend about how important it is to keep the brain functioning and, and the gastrointestinal system and the gut and how important it is to keep the gut working and things that are toxic to the stomach and things that are toxic to you that you don't even know about. And uh, it was really exciting to listen to him and, and that allows me to be a better doctor, uh, a lot better chiropractor, allows me to help more people and that's what's exciting and that's why I put these events on and that's why I'm, I love doing the health kicks because I can share this information with other people. We, got a, we also have another great video that we've been working on. It's actually called Dr. Joe's Lose to Live. And uh, what it was is it's uh, a patient that I worked with. He was uh, gained quite a bit of weight. He was in, in, uh, upwards over 300 pounds. His name's Doc, uh, Tom. I, I call him Dr. Tom. It's the honorary Dr. Tom Thompson. And I'm really looking forward to, to launching that. It's actually a three-month program. And this guy, I don't want to give it all away, but this guy went from 320 pounds to dropping... Uh, a third, let's let's say it that way, almost a third of his body weight. And we took a photograph of him every single day, and we did video every day of him eating, working out, uh, interviewing him. We went to the gym with him. We went to the home. We went to his office place. We went everywhere, family, uh, and we did all kinds of video with this guy. And uh, we watched him go through. We call him the Incredible Shrinking Man. You get to watch him day to day. And we get to talk about the, what we needed to do uh, from the headspace as well as from the physical space in order to get him healthy. And uh, he told me today we did one of the last videos. So we got a couple more weeks and he gave me a hug today and we both got a little bit emotional for just a moment. And he said, you know, Doc, thanks for saving my life. And um, I get goosebumps just telling me that. But I got to tell you, it is awesome. He's been under chiropractic care for a while. He's He's starting to adopt that chiropractic lifestyle. He wants to eat well. He wants to keep his nervous system healthy. Um, he wants to exercise. He wants to think better. He wants to do all these things that I try to teach you guys in these health kicks. So uh, that being said, today I wanted to talk about autoimmune diseases. And there's so many of them. And we've kind of touched on specifics of them. But today let's just talk about generality and why it's important because I learned some stuff at this weekend seminar. And that is this. Autoimmune means exactly what it says. Autoimmune. Your body is actually starting to attack itself. Your body is automatically starting to attack its own body tissue. There's all different types of immune autoimmune problems. I mean, you could talk about multiple sclerosis. Some of the cases of MS are related to it. Lupus, uh, different types of arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, all of these diseases and so many more are diseases where the body starts attacking itself. Now that being said, why would your body, why would your body actually develop antibodies against its own tissue? Rheumatoid, for example, hits joints. Not all the joints of the body, but it hits certain joints of the body. Why would that be? You know, why would your body develop that? Why would a lupus, for example, develop antibodies to attack your own soft tissue? Why would that happen? Um, and so forth and so on. Why does that happen? Well, one of the reasons is, uh, is there's a genetic proclivity, uh, HLA, B27, blah, blah, blah. But there's, there's different genetic markers that you tend to see people more prone, a proclivity, a tendency, more prone to developing a certain autoimmune disease. However, here's the problem with that. Everybody that has that marker doesn't have the autoimmune disease. And there's people that don't have the marker that have the autoimmune disease but it tends to be a little bit higher in those people with the marker. So we can't blame it all on genetics. Genetics can play, maybe show a weakness, a weakness in the body, but it doesn't mean that that's entirely what it is. And what I learned this weekend that I wanted to share with you is how important the gut is in preventing the body from being sick. And what I mean by that is your gut is a, is a line of defense. It's a filter, okay? And what I mean, what I mean by that is the filter of your gut Think of it as like a piece of cheesecloth 
right? So food's gonna pass through there, and depending on how big the little holes are in the cheesecloth, the, certain things are not allowed to pass directly into the circulatory system. See, as your food digests, it becomes really teeny weeny little molecules that are breaking, broken down in little compounds. And by breaking it down, to sometimes right down to the mineral level, right? Um, that's really good. The body then, through the cell level, picks up what it wants. But with the gut getting weak or it gets holes in it, it's called leaky gut, leaky gut. The gut lining actually gets big holes. It's like having a tear in your cheesecloth. Big, large, undigested particles of food or different types of matter will go drop into the circulatory system. And by dropping in the circulatory system, you got this large mass of something that drops in the circulatory system. Your immune system goes, oh my God, what the heck is that? It thinks it's an invader. It attacks it and it builds antibodies to it. Now, if that antibody that it builds or responds is similar, is similar to some form of tissue in your body, your immune system gets confused. It'll attack different parts of your body thinking that that's an invader. And that's how many autoimmune diseases develop. Now listen, our guts are typically leaky until the age of three or four. Three or four. By that age, at the latest, what happens is the gut starts to supposedly starts to tighten back up and it becomes or tighten up and it becomes very very specific or selective on what it's going to allow through. Now, why would it be leaky up till four? Because I know this sounds kind of odd in our society now, but most children or we were really developed to drink mom's milk up until that age of two, three, or four. I know that sounds crazy. Just just throwing it out there, okay? So what happens is the gut's wide because it wants to absorb large bits, large parts of proteins, large bits of fat, large bits of carbohydrate because we want to grow rapidly. Now what happens is by about age four, we all become essentially lactate intolerant because what happens is the normal gut flora, the bacteria and so forth that are in there, we don't need that stuff anymore. And the body starts changing its chemistry in the gut, but we need it early on. We need it age one, two, maybe three, or we did because we were developed to, to grow up on mom's milk, like I said, in those early days. As we got older, now we start introducing food, different types of food in our body, and then that food can't pass directly in the circulatory system so it doesn't develop autoimmune diseases in the body, okay? I'm not saying every autoimmune disease is a result of this, but many are, okay? Now we've got a major problem in our society. We are developing intolerance to gluten, celiac, and what, what we're seeing is different foods now are toxic to the lining of the gut. So think of your cells all sticking together with like a little glue, like caulk. And when the glue um, gets damaged by certain uh, chemicals, the, the cells don't stick together. Now you create, unfortunately, a toxic gut. Therefore, you create a leaky gut. So you have wounds, if you will, chemical wounds within the gut that allow particles to pass through. And one of the main causes of this, unfortunately, is gluten. Now there's different proteins in gluten that can be toxic to you. They're called gliadin proteins, okay? And it's really starting to become understood now. There's a couple new labs now that are able to test for gliadin, where before they thought it was only one type of protein, now they realize there's many proteins. So you may have gotten tested before through a blood test that came up normal, but you actually might have the gluten antibody to another form of protein. One of the ways they do test for it is a, is a sample. They'll do a, a colonoscopy and they actually pull a tissue out. I'm not a big fan of that. Why one out of 200 people, the most recent study shows a perforation of the colon. So there's a lot of people that don't have the problem, so you're really risking a peritonitis type infection. Uh, number two, it's not specific to that. It indicates, hey, there's a damage to the colon lining, but it doesn't mean it's directly from that. So I'm a, I'm a much bigger proponent of the blood test, and now we've got a couple of really specific labs that can do the right job, so you don't really need to do that type of testing anymore. So if you're showing the antibody, you gotta stay off of it. Whether or not you're showing symptoms doesn't matter. You're, you're very prone. The other problem is uh, uh, the wheat now is GMO. It's genetically modified. So you can't really find original wheat anymore. And now uh, the companies have genetically modified, not because it's a big conspiracy. They want wheat that can handle more water, more rain, more wind, more heat, more dry. So they want the farmer to have a better yield. But by doing so, you've got such a hardy wheat 
that now the body itself can't even digest it. Plus, you're putting something in the body that never existed in nature before. The body doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't know how to digest it. And for many people, it's making us toxic. It can create inflammation of the brain. It can lead to MS. It can lead to Parkinson's. It can lead to um, um, Lou Gehrig's disease. There's some studies now showing it can lead to Lou Gehrig's disease. It can lead to other types of autoimmune diseases. So certainly you can get the blood test. We have uh, uh, really decided in our family to be gluten free. So I, I'm not going to say we never have a, a, a piece of gluten, but the idea that we're putting a daily ingesting of gluten with wheat pasta and wheat bread and uh, you know and wheat cereals and so forth, we've basically eliminated that. We just we shop now for gluten free, uh, wheat free, gluten free, and uh, and again once in a while we might splurge, but 98% of the time we're we're a wheat free family. Uh, and we'll find that overall it'll be a much healthier diet because wheat is becoming intolerant for us as well. So again, autoimmune means your body's attacking itself. One of the ways to become autoimmune is to have a leaky gut. One of the ways to have a leaky gut is to put different forms of wheat in your body and that's creating toxicity to the gut, causing wounds and therefore making the gut uh, more prone to be leaky, thereby absorbing larger molecules of food, which means what? Compounds of food, which means now you're going to develop antibodies against that molecule, which means your body starts attacking itself. So if you're somebody that is, is developed an autoimmune disease, I would have absolutely 100%, the first thing I would do is eliminate wheat from the diet. Second thing, I would make sure that I have a very healthy probiotic. You want to take a, a probiotic with multiple healthy bacteria in the gut, and that allows your body to have the good bacteria to properly digest. Uh, um, the, the food that you're putting in allows your body to work better, allows your immune system to be a lot healthier. Guys, we're way out of time. Hopefully this was helpful for everybody. Uh, remember, this is Dr. Joe Borio. Remember to eat well. I need you to exercise. I need you to have positive thoughts. I need you to get a good night's sleep. I need you to drink a lot of water. And I need to make sure you, your mother, your father, your grandfather, your kids, your cousins, your uncles, your co-workers, Everybody you know, everyone you see, you got to make sure you're under regular chiropractic care. You got to make sure these messages are getting down the spine, out to the organs, and the messages from organs are getting back up to the spine so your body works the way it's supposed to. And who's supposed to go? You're supposed to go from baby time right up till the womb, or right up to the tomb. Sorry, I messed that up. So you're supposed to go womb to the tomb, as one, uh, one of my professors used to teach me. Guys, have a great week. Be healthy. Can't wait to talk to you guys next week.